So week four, the results were a little better. I was 11 and five picking the winners, 10 and six against the spread. Season to date, 38 and 26 picking the winners, and finally above 500 with the spread, 34 and 30. So uh, mediocre, but not terrible. I will take mediocre, but not terrible at this point. Uh, anyway, so let's go ahead and I'll give you my picks for week five of this 2024 NFL season. Uh, Thursday night, you had a great one between the Buccaneers and the Falcons, and I took Atlanta minus the two and a half, so that was good. Um, fun game though really really fun game um, I hope you get more of those game types of games as the season goes along uh, you're starting off the London round this year with the Jets taking on the Vikings so Aaron Rodgers taking on Sam Darnold potentially a Sam Darnold revenge game taking on the team that drafted him number three overall back in 2018 the Jets you know, the Jets coming off of a bad loss <laughs> to the Broncos last Sunday at home. Meanwhile, the Vikings just keep rolling their 4-0. Right now, you know, I, it's always with the London game. You wonder how well teams travel, etc. Um, I got to go with the Vikings minus a 2.5. I just have to. Uh, switching to the noon or 1 o'clock start times, depending on whether you're on the central time zone or east coast. You got the Panthers trying to keep pounding as they go to Chicago to take on the Bears and Soldier Field, that third-rate dump of a stadium that looks like a UFO took a huge hulk of crap inside of the Roman Coliseum. Um, sorry, got to take the Bears here. Bears minus the four. Good one. Ravens traveling to Cincinnati to take on the Bengals. The Bengals, you know, finally getting off the schneid last week. Meanwhile, the Ravens seem to be piecing it together. They're favored by two and a half. I'll take the Bengals here plus the two and a half. For what reason, I really know not why, but I'm going to. Uh, you've got a game that probably nobody wants to watch, including Dolphins and Patriots fans. <laughs> it's Miami taking God New England. Uh, it, are they still starting Jacoby Brissett? I didn't even look to see if Drake May was starting. If Brissett is still starting in this one, it's just stupid. Like, what fucking point are you proving other than you're an idiot? Because you can't even, even if you're saying, well, you want to protect the young quarterback. Okay, well, you want the young quarterback to develop and get better. And the only way to do that is to play and additionally, you can't really make the argument at this point that Jacoby Brissett gives you a better opportunity to win. It just doesn't. Um, give me Miami minus the one in a game that I think everybody will want to not watch. Uh, you got the Browns traveling to Washington to take on the surprising 3-1 and one Commanders. Jaden Daniels, after four games, looking like he could be the real deal. And living here in the Virginia area, you can't imagine how, much, how different the vibe is around Commanders fans. Like, they're actually... Publicly acknowledging their Commanders fans. They're talking about Jane Daniels and all of this. Uh, give me the Browns plus the three because sometimes the NFL makes no fucking sense. You got the Colts traveling to Jacksonville to take on the Jags. The Colts look like they'll be starting Joe, Joe Flacco. Um, as Anthony Richardson, I think, was just de downgraded to doubtful for the matchup. Meanwhile, you've got the Jaguars at 0-4. And, and they need a win in the absolute positively worst way. I'll take Jacksonville minus the three. Assume that their desperation means that they'll come out and play some better football today. You, then you've got what you could arguably say is your marquee matchup of the early Sunday games and potentially of the whole week. It's the Bills traveling to Houston to take on the Texans. A couple of 3-1 teams. I will take Houston minus the one in something that should be a really good one. I kind of wish this was a Sunday night or Monday night game, frankly. Then the late Sunday afternoon matchups, you got the Raiders traveling to Denver to take on the Broncos. The Broncos have won a couple of games on the backs of their defense. Uh, Denver's favored by three in this one. With these divisional tilts, you just never really know. I'll pick the Raiders in an upset, give me the Raiders plus the three. You've got the Cardinals traveling to San Francisco to take on the 49ers. You know, the Cardinals are a little improved from last year, but they're still not a very good team. Meanwhile, even with some of the injuries they've had to star players on the offensive side of the ball, 49ers are doing just enough right now. Um, keep themselves around. Keep themselves in the mix. Give me San Francisco minus the seven. You got the Packers who tried to make a furious comeback last Sunday against the Vikings only to come up short with Jordan Love back in the fold. He hit some big plays, but he sure made some really bad ones too. Traveling to Los Angeles to take on the Rams who just lost to the Bears. That should always be embarrassing for somebody like a Sean McVay. You've got Green Bay favored by three here. I tend to agree with that one. Give me the Packers minus the three. You've got the Giants traveling to Seattle to take on the Seahawks. You know, Seattle is favored by seven coming off of that loss to Detroit on Monday night. Meanwhile, the Giants, you know, again, one of those teams you assume is not going anywhere. 
and that's because they're not going anywhere. <laughs> and they've still got Danny Dines as their quarterback. So how excited about that are you really supposed to be? Uh, the only thing that concerns me a little bit in this one is the spread. When you start getting to seven points and above, you know, even similar with the Cardinals and 49ers, that one in particular because it's a divisional match, if you just really don't know. Um, but God, like, I got to go with the Seahawks here. I think they bounce back from Monday night, give Monday night's loss, give me the Seahawks minus the seven. And if they do win that one, they'll be sitting at four and one through five games. They'll be feeling pretty good about themselves, I'd have to imagine. A big historical matchup on Sunday night, if you believe in that type of thing. You've got the Cowboys traveling to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. You know, the Cowboys certainly would love to win this one road game, get themselves above 500. Meanwhile, the Steelers coming off of their first loss of the season last week and kind of one of those deals, right, where, you know, you could manage the game all right as a quarterback but and rely on a great defense, but... That's the problem with the modern NFL is even when you have a great defense, which don't get it twisted, the Steelers do have a great defense. At some point in time, you're going to get shredded. Like that's just the nature of the NFL. An offense is going to be the wrong matchup for you. They're going to figure out some things. They're going to hit some big plays. They're going to do something. And as a result, what do you do on offense? It was funny watching on Sunday on the social media devices. As Steelers fans are talking about, well, this is a big drive for Justin Fields. Let's we'll see what he... It's the same shit we talked about for three years in Chicago. Like, he would sit there and be, eh, early on. Then you get to some garbage time and you look really good. And then when shit really mattered, not so much, right? Um, but it is what it is. Pittsburgh's favored by two and a half on this one, probably based off the strength of the defense. I actually feel like this plays well for the Cowboys. Give me the Cowboys plus the two and a half. And then the big Monday night matchup, you've got the Saints traveling to Kansas City to take on the Chiefs. The Chiefs are undefeated, two-time Super Bowl champions, and you feel like this is a team that's just skating by. And now you're heading into this matchup. They've already lost Isaiah Pacheco due to injury. Now they've lost Rasheed Rice to injury. You look at that receiving core, and you say outside of Travis Kelsey, who are they going to throw the ball to? Like, how much are they going to be able to give Xavier Worthy into the offense? Like, it's legit questions here, right? It feels like for the Chiefs at the moment, maybe they'll make a trade for a wide receiver in the coming weeks. Um, maybe they should keep calling the Bears about Keenan Allen. I don't know. But they're going to have to find a way to win as a team. And I know that sounds kind of corny to say, well, of course they're going to win as a team. But they really need to. Because I don't think they can count on their offense putting up massive numbers right now. I just don't see it. But the Chiefs are balanced enough as a team. I like the Chiefs to win this one. I do like the Saints, though, to cover the five-and-a-half point spread. So there you are. Those are my week five picks. We'll see how I do, and I'm sure most of you will do better than I. Take care.